Hey guys, welcome to the traditional bow hunting and wilderness podcast. This is Jason Samkoviak. Today we're going to talk about hill style bows, or as it's commonly referred to as the ASL American Semi Longbow, and what some of the benefits of them are, but mainly what they are, and how many versions of them are there, what's the different options, and what qualifies a longbow as an ASL or hill style bow. That's the, the big question that a lot of you guys ask me. Um, and basically, you have both. A lot of the bows were designed after how the kind of bow that Howard Hill shot, so a lot of people call it a Hill style bow, Howard Hill style longbow. Uh, there's even a bow company out there called Howard Hill Longbows that makes those kind of bows. Uh, there's, but the proper term for it, American Semi Longbow or ASL bow, is what the Hill bow refers to. This is the same. This is a style of bow, and what it is basically, the one thing that makes a Hill style or ASL longbow. It, it makes it a hill bow or a long or ASL bow is a straight limb moving in one direction. That is that is the whole definition of it um, in general. That's that's what makes an ASL or hill style bow. It's a straight limb moving in one direction. It's a preferred style of many bow hunters out there. Uh, preferred style of Howard Hill. Preferred style of a lot of people for a lot of reasons, which we'll we'll get into. But there are variations of hill style bows. But if you look at this one here, this is my, my Northern Mist Classic Longbow. You can see from here, I'll keep it all in frame there, but you can see from here where the shelf is that that limb is 100% straight. Okay, it's, it's a straight limb. Where if you take another Northern Mist bow here, this is a Northern Mist Barriga. And I hold them together, you can see that this limb has got some bend to it. You got deflex down here by the riser where it deflexes out, and then you got reflex in here uh, where it reflexes. That's a reflex deflex style bow. Now, this one is a very mild reflex deflex style bow. Some of them get very aggressive, like you see down here in this picture, uh, where they can get very aggressive. When that bow is strung, it actually looks more like a V in its shape when it's strung, where both of these still take the more traditional D style shape. This is mild R&D, but you can see that the shape has got the deflex and the reflex. Deflex here, reflex here in that actual limb design, where the ASL or hill style bow is a straight limb bow. Now, some variations of that that do come into play. I'm going to set this down right here. Now, what happens here is you have a classic straight limb style longbow, which is what I have. That's again, that's what you're seeing here. This is that classic model, straight limb. Bottom limb I, is exactly the same. It is a straight limb bow all the way down, just like that. Now, uh, this particular one, it can have up to three quarters of an inch of back set, meaning where the limbs tip away from the riser here, out away from, on a bow, let me break that down so a lot of people don't understand that it's new to this. On your bow, this side, that points away from you when you shoot. This side out here, that is the back of a bow. This side that faces you that you see when you're shooting is actually called the belly of a bow. This is the belly, this is the back. So when you hear people talk about back set or setback, that means that the limb will actually come or angle away slightly. Now this classic straight limb style longbow can have at, at 70 inches, it's about a, a three quarter inch back set. Um, to this type of a bow here for a straight limb and again as it gets shorter that does diminish from less than three quarters of an inch because not many people are shooting longer than 70 but on a 70 inch bow it could be from this point here it could be three quarters of an inch tipped that way you know tipped away from the bow like that three quarters of an inch out at the end but it's still considered a straight limb uh, classic style longbow and, and I love it it's a great bow now other options that you have a reverse handle straight limb bow like this would take the same classic design but here you see with a with a traditional bow you have the, the riser here here's the back of the bow here's the belly side so I'm gonna grab it as a left-handed shooter I'm gonna grab it like this and you can see this riser comes back to me what that does is that puts this, this almost gives it a, a more of a reflex shape riser. It puts that out there more, um, basically getting my hand further back from the center line. You can see the center line right here of the bow. Well, with this riser or the handle coming out this way, the grip coming this way, it puts my hand back further from that center line of the bow. Sticks the center line of the bow out further past my hand. Now, a reverse handle basically is flipping the bow around and then still having the shelf, I'll come over here and see, still having, but now you'll shoot it this way. 
So what it does is it may look funny. It actually looks like a bow is strung backwards because you're going to string it this way so that you can shoot it like that is the intention for it. But what happens is that center line of the bow is now much closer to your hand than if it's spun around in here where that center line of the bow is further away from your hand. So it moves it in closer to your hand. So a reverse handle is basically when a boyer builds it, instead of putting the handle on your side that you grab and hold it and shoot from, he puts it on the opposite side so that your hand gets to get in deeper to the center line of the bow causing it to be a reverse handle. Uh, that model would be a whisper. All these models I'm talking about, they're from Northern Miss Longbow. Um, Steve builds all my bows. He's a very good friend of mine and uh, he builds the best uh, ASL style bows. He builds the best bows there are, period, in my opinion. I've been shooting them now for almost four and a half, whatever, I think four and a half years and best bows I've ever used. Uh, but what's nice is you can go to his website, you can see the different models. These are what they're called and what the, he'll explain what the benefits of them are. You can also call him and ask him and talk to him about any of this kind of stuff if you're looking for one. He will help you in every possible way that you can imagine. He's awesome at this stuff. Um, but So you have your basically your straight limb bow in a straight handle, standard grip straight handle, or you flip it around and you can have it as a reverse handle long bow. And I'll get into the advantages of it. First, I want to break down the differences because these are all... ASL style, hill style, American semi longbow style bows because every one of them has a straight limb with some of these variations. So we covered the classic straight limb, the reverse handle, these little dots on here, those are the side that your string would be. I didn't know how to represent that. I was going to originally pull pictures and insert them, but then I couldn't, it gets to be too much of a pain in the butt, and then I don't have all the pictures that I would need for it, so I'm taking them from other people and I didn't want to deal with it. So I drew it. So my art here may not be the best. But this dots represent the side that you would actually pull the string from. So standard straight limb, a reverse handle straight limb. Next we have what we call a back set bow. Not a lot of people make these with a good amount of back set. Steve came up with this. Uh, he didn't come up with it. It was actually people have come up with it many, many, many years ago. But he kind of perfected it, took it to a new level. And uh, it's one of his greatest bows is a, his American model. And it's a back set with up to two inches of back set. It's 70 inches long bow. It's two inches of back set. Just like we talked about with this classic, if you take this limb, and you kick it out a little bit. This could be out three quarters of an inch at 70. Well, his, that American, takes that out two inches at 70. So it's got more back set to it. I'll explain the benefits to that. But what is what it does. So it kind of looks like you take your riser and then these limbs will kind of come off a little bit out on each end and angle away sort of uh, to give kind of a, a visual here. They will basically, instead of being a straight limb, they will look more like it'll have more of a that kind of angle to it. Instead of being straight right here, it will kick out more towards the towards towards the target, not towards the shooter. But that would be a back set because it's setting towards the back of the bow, which is what we call that part that is you know facing towards the target is the back. Tips out back set like that. Now. The other option, and that one being his American model, which is awesome. It's been probably it's been a very super popular bow for him since he's got that down and perfected. Um, string follow bows are the exact opposite. A string follow bow means instead of it setting toward or towards the back of the bow or away from the shooter, string follow goes towards the shooter. So it has a back set this way. Uh, it, it, not a back set, it would be almost more of a belly set, but it tips towards there. It leans in, so it's more of a, that's what they call a string follow design, because it leans towards the string is where what happens. And I'll, I'll explain the benefits to it as well too, but so you understand these. Um, and that would be from Steve, that would be his Shelton model. And then you also have what he's come up with, it's his own design that I don't think has ever been done, which is a huge hit, is he came up with a reverse handle and a string follow. So you have a reverse handle that gets you closer to the center line. Again, we'll explain the benefits. And then it also leans back towards the shooter in a string follow bow and gives you a bunch of benefits there. And that bow is absolutely incredible. And uh, he's actually got a new design that I'm not quite sure that I'm even allowed to mention yet, but he's in the works testing right now that takes a couple of these other variables and puts them together and makes one pretty sweet, wicked bow that he's, uh, like I said, I'm not even sure he's ready for that to be announced yet. But, um, but he's working with it and testing it right now, and it is pretty impressive. I'll let you know when I know. But these are basically 
These are what we would call your hill style bow. Why? Because every one of them has a straight limb moving in one direction. Straight limb here, straight limb there, even though these are, are uh, back set, they're still a straight limb. These are string follow, but they are still a straight limb. This, this is a deflex and a reflex type riser. These are what most of the modern bows, uh, long bows out there today are for modern bows. Nothing wrong with that design, and I'll actually do a video that's going to touch base on some of that later down the road. This one, we are sticking strictly with the Hill style or American semi longbows. So, what are the benefits of these models? How do they come into play? What, what's better? What makes this better than this, or this better than this, or why should I buy that one and not that one, and what, what, what's the difference here? That's a big question. That's a question that I get from a lot of people since I started shooting one of these kind of bows. What are the advantages to each of these categories? Good news is there's advantages to all of them, but first let's talk about the limb itself because, it, because all of these will feature this function, this function of a straight limb moving in just one direction. See on this bow down here, again, not that there's anything wrong with these bows. These are very, very popular and they're really good shooting bows and I'm not knocking them. But to give an example between these, on here, you have three different directions of limb. You have a deflex portion, a reflex portion, a straight portion in there. So you have a limb, one limb trying to go towards the target, one part of that limb bending back towards the shooter, one limb in the middle of that that's kind of got a straight zone to it, and you have all these limb directions working in against each other. They're working in different unison. Um, and that can create some problems and some issues if your form is not perfect, uh, if things are not spot on. Think of this as more of a, um, they do really good, but uh, trying to put it into a perspective, many of you guys will understand. Think of it as like uh, uh, ping golf clubs, okay? Um, everybody always wants to have ping golf clubs. I don't golf, by the way, but I'm, I, you, you know, I think people want the pings, but from what I hear, they're a little harder to hit with because they got a specialized sweet spot and they're designed for certain ways to be done. The more radical your bows get and the more opposite and different directions your limbs work, the more critical that bow becomes of your form, your release, your uh, things that you do. And it becomes more, more crucial that you have everything perfect when you shoot it. Not that they're bad, um, but they are not as simple in design as a straight limb moving in one direction like you have on a Hill style or ASL style bow. Which is one of the reasons that Howard Hill preferred this style of a bow. Forgiveness. That limb, when I shoot this, when I, when I actually, let's look at an R&D bow. Again, I don't have a very aggressive one of what we call a hybrid, but on my mild deflex, reflex bow, when I draw this back, this is going to bend this limb here, this is going to bend this limb here. You have all these different curves working against each other, where when I draw back my hill style or ASL bow, all that happens is this limb is going to bend. That's all that it's going to do. It's going to bend in one way. It's going to go forward. When I let that string go, and I let that go, this limb is going to go just one direction forward. Okay, you don't have, uh, like on a recurve bow, you don't have limb tips that are going one way, a limb that's bending down here, this limb that's bending this way. You don't have all the stuff going on. With this straight limb, one direction, that's all it is. That's what makes a, a hill style or ASL style longbow. And there's, there's a lot of benefits to that it becomes what we call forgiving. There's other things in here that make other models forgiving and it can take that to new levels too, but the straight limb design is more forgiving than any other design out there because of the fact that it is only one direction of travel. With that, it's more forgiving of torquing into bowstring. It's more forgiving of any mistakes you make. If you put too much high finger pressure, too much low finger pressure on how you're shooting. Uh, if you twist your hand when you shoot, if you twist your hand out, you twist your hand in. When you release, if you twist and throw, all of these things happening, whatever mistake or cattywampusness you apply to that bow or that bowstring, with an ASL or Hill style bow, because the limbs are just going straight away from you, straight shot, boom, that's all they're doing is that one direction. They have a better tendency to just correct that and bring it back in line. Where if you have different limb directions doing different things, it has a tendency to let that caddy wampusness continue along. Um, again, I'm over exaggerating everything, but that's the principle to it. That's the reason that a Howard Hill style longbow or an ASL semi longbow is such a forgiving bow. I per, how forgiving? Um, I, I would have never thought that it would have been 
as forgiving as it is now that I shoot one. I spent 25 years shooting mild R&D bows, which still are not aggressive, it's very aggressive. It's a mild reflex deflex bow, but I have shot these for 25 years. And when I started shooting a straight limb classic hill style bow like this, uh, the forgiveness level that I'm seeing in my shots and how it lets me get away with mistakes, I, I, I guess the best way to describe it would be to say that if I had known this stuff now, when I first started out, I switched to a hill style bow 25 years ago, without fail, hands down. Um, for bow hunting, the forgiveness that I get out of that bow for my shooting style and what I do is I've never seen anything like it. Um, I've, I've had some bows that shoot really good. I've had some bows that shoot okay, I, but they've all kind of been the same. When I pick this bow up now, I put those arrows exactly like I want all the time. Even when I draw and I lock in and I shoot and boom, that arrow's on the way and I'm going, oh, that's not going to work real good. Oh, it still hits there. I don't understand it, but it still works and it gets it there. That's the forgiveness level. Any mistake I make, you know, if I pluck my string and I throw my hand, I feel that right when I shoot, I go, oh, that's going to be bad. But that arrow still drops in right where I want it to. So it's it's very forgiving of your mistakes is the advantage to a hill style or ASL style longbow. Now, there are some, why, why so many different models? Why a straight limb classic, a reverse handle whisper, a backside American, a string follow Shelton? Uh, a reverse handle string follow Raymer and whatever this new design is. Why all these different variations? What's the benefit? That's what we're going to get into right now. I'll explain each one of these for you. Okay, so now the straight limb classic, we've already covered that. What that is, basically you're looking at this right here. You get the benefits of that straight limb moving in one direction, um, the simplicity of it, the straight design. Now, a reverse handle, the advantage to a reverse handle, again, is it gets you closer to the center line of that bow by the, the boyer has to have a handle on there. You just can't shoot just a limb like this. Uh, if you could, that would put you right in center line as close as you can be there too. But since you need something to hold on to, what he does is it's basically it's essentially the same as you grabbing onto that limb and bending it there versus here it puts that limb further out away from your hand for the center line with a reverse handle it gets you just like you're grabbing that limb but you need something to hold on to so he puts some handle material out on the front for you to wrap your fingers around so that is that reverse handle design um, right there for you now the advantage to that is it gets you closer to the center line of that bow which is going to offer some more forgiveness the further you are from that center line out back here, you know, if the handle was here, or the further out from center you are, the more chance there is for torque to be induced. You can see how much more exaggerated that torque would be the further I get out here as I twist my hand, the further, you know, just the same twist creates more or less torque with that as you get in there. Well, if you were to grab it here, because you're right down that center line, there's no real, your hand doesn't affect that bow as much as far as knocking you off target or torquing that bow. So less torque is induced into the bow with a reverse handle than with a standard straight grip or standard, you know, back towards the belly type handle grip is. A reverse handle like that gives you more forgiveness in the bow as far as bow torque and things like that. Now, <clears throat> Uh, that's the reverse handle. Now, back set, I probably should have did these in order because they're really not in order of different things. But a back set version takes it like this and puts that limb out there again, like we said, gets that out there up to two inches at seven on a 70 inch bow. You get that back set forward. What that's going to do for you is it's going to give you more speed and uh, more performance out of a straight limb style bow. You're still just bending a straight limb. But because it's got that forward cock to it and, and leans out there more, there's more energy is being transferred to that arrow while the limb is still trying to catch up. It's The limb is farther from hitting its brace position at the time that the arrow leaves the string. So more of that speed and energy is transferred into that arrow when it takes off than a classic bowl where the limb is going to come to rest earlier. So on this one... This is where the limb has zero, right here at this position, that's where that limb has zero energy in the limbs. 
Well, if you bend that forward a little bit more, it has to travel to there to have less energy in the limbs, to have zero energy. So what it does is that back set gives a little more speed and a little more performance to a classic style design. That is going to be your back set American bow that's going to basically take your classic, add a little more speed and a little more punch to it. So what it's going to basically do. String follow, on the other hand, is where the limb comes back to you towards the shooter. Now what that does is because you come back to your, your brace position or your zero tension on the limbs position is further back towards you. By the time that arrow is about ready to leave the string, it's already used up most of the energy in the limbs. Therefore, it's going to have a lot more control to it. You're not fighting the, the, the limbs as much as you are with this. So you end up with a string follow bow. It's going to be quieter as it's shot, a little bit quieter. And it's also going to have, um, it's going to be a little easier, a little more forgiving and a little softer, smoother to shoot because you don't have that limb hitting so hard when it stops by the string because it's trying to get to that standard stationary position. When that standard, sta you know, that standard stationary position is here, when that limb moves forward, it gets to stop here. By the time that arrow's gone, it's only got a little bit to go to where it wants to be at. Where if that limb tip is here, that st thing stops here, you got a lot more energy transferring into that limb. That gives you more forgiveness in a string follows type bow. It's going to be a little smoother shooting, a little softer shooting. Uh, it's got some nice advantages to it. It's, it's a smooth bow, a great shooter, and very forgiving. Um, and then when you take into the reverse handle string follow bow, now what you're getting here is you're getting the best of both worlds. You're going to get a string follow bow that's going to be softer and easier to shoot um, and be a little more forgiving. And then you take the qualities of that reverse handle that we talked about with getting you more to the center line of the bow and giving that forgiveness, you're going to get both of them. So it's probably that Raymer bow that Steve makes. And he's the only one out there making it that I'm aware of. And that is probably the most forgiving, smoothest shooting, quietest uh, longbow that's ever been made before. Still very powerful. It was kind of funny because uh, when he originally wanted, somebody wanted him to make that for him, he said, no, it doesn't work. On paper, it doesn't work. You lose too much. Guy told him to make it anyway. Steve built one and he was shocked at how he did not lose the performance. And was, it was only in a couple feet per second difference of this of the standard Shelton string follow. And he, he was amazed at the, the benefits of it. And he shot that bow himself for two years now. Uh, he loves it. It's, it's an incredible bow. Many people out there have it now and straight up love it. Um, so that's the advantage there. This one, like I said, is going to be another combination of this that I'm not getting into yet till he tells me it's an option to, to break it down for you. But he's got some pretty good things under his belt he's working on. But, so we know that your standard straight limb design takes the advantages of the straight limb. Um, when you go to the reverse handle, you gain a little more forgiveness because you're getting more center into the bow. When you go to a back set version, you're getting more performance out of a standard classic model. Uh, and then when you go to a string follow, you're taking it to the most forgiving type bow that's out there. The quietest, most forgiving style of a bow. When you combine the reverse handle benefits with the string follow benefits, you get into what we call the Raymer. And you get top notch, just like I said, the most forgiving, quietest, uh, smoothest shooting longbow that's probably ever been produced in history. It's, it's an incredible bow and the accuracy and stuff is amazing. Now, when it comes to these bows, um, the interesting part, uh, do you lose much speed going with this string follow? Not really. It's, I mean, within a foot or two or feet per second, it's nothing to write home about over this versus that classic. So you're not really losing anything in a string follow. If you like that design, that's a great way to go. Uh, the reverse handle, same thing. All of these bows are shooting within a few feet of, of, uh, per second of each of them. Uh, the American being a little bit quicker and uh, the, the Raymer being probably a little bit slower, but all of them within so little of a difference that realistically I think you as the way we shoot, I think you would have more variation just in your shooting styles than you would in actually um, if you were to put these on a machine and shoot them and see the FPS feet per second difference per arrow out of a machine. I'll bet you have more variation in how you shoot, whether you actually draw, come in, whatever it is that you're doing. You'll have more variation shot to shot than you'll get between these bow designs. So, um, and again, not that I've tested that. I'm just going from what, what, it, what I would expect to happen. So, the choices are yours. They're all great. They're all American semi-longbow style bows. They're all Howard Hill style longbows because they all have that straight limb design. 
benefits of them are huge. The forgiveness is great. Um, some of the things that I see people talk about as far as, well, what's the downside to an, an ASL bow or a Howard Hill style bow? I hear people talk about stacking. I have never ever seen a, a, a bow that stacks that's come out of Steve's shop. Are there other bowyers out there? Yeah, lots of them. Some that are making great bows, some that are not making great bows. And that goes for every category. Doesn't matter if it's an ASL bow, a hybrid bow, a reflex deflex bow, a recurve. Doesn't matter. Some people can make them right, some people can't. And uh, there's a lot more that goes into this than just gluing some pieces of wood together and slapping fiberglass on the outside. Tapers and uh, wedges and power wedges and uh, efficiency parts and where bends are and fade outs and there's a lot to them. You get a good boyer, stacking is never a concern. He's going to build it for you so that it maxes out at what it's supposed to for your draw lengths and give you all the right benefits. Steve knows how to do this. Um, and uh, another thing I hear is, well, they have a lot of hand shock. There's no hand shock to a hill style bow if it's built right. Plain and simple. And a lot of people build really good ones. The misconception that comes into that is when you shoot a hill style bow, you don't want to come into it shooting an arrow that weighs, you know, six grains per pound. You know, you don't want to be shooting ultra light arrows out of this. If you take, pick up one of these bows in a, in a 60 pound bow, for example, just throwing a number, even let's just call it a 50 pound bow. And you take a standard carbon arrow and you put a 100 grain head on the end of it and that's all you do and you shoot it out of this bow, you're going to feel it. But if you shoot it out of this bow, you're going to feel it. If you shoot it out of a recurve, you're going to feel it. It does. It has nothing to do with the bow. It's the fact that you put way too light of an arrow on there and your, your bow cannot, your bow has too much energy for that arrow. So it can't give that arrow all of its energy. So when that arrow leaves the bow, it's still filled with energy and it's got to go somewhere and you're going to feel it come through your arm. Um, so when it comes to shooting these bows, heavy arrows are good. But then again, when you, whether you shoot a recurve, a hybrid bow, a, uh, a mild R&D bow, you shoot a hill style bow, any, any bow you shoot, even a compound in my opinion, a heavy arrow is better. For a lot of millions of reasons, that'll be a great uh, show for another time. But people say, well, these do, you know, they, they're... they're um, have some hand shock. There's no hand shock to this bow whatsoever. Not even a little bit. Another thing that causes that or that I think people say that for is they shoot these bows wrong. A hill style bow, straight grip or locator grip, either one of them, or you can get them in a dish, but you can see this is a straight grip all the way down. This one has a little locator right there that I can take and put my hand on and I can stick the web of my hand right in there like that and hold that bow or this one, which is straight grip, and I can grab it. Well, when it comes to shooting one of these kind of bows, either way with the grip, with the straight limb movement pattern, they allow you to grab a bow, a long bow, the way it's meant to. A lot of people shoot uh, long bows like they shoot recurves. They're going to take that bow with all the energy of that bow going to come right into the webbing of their hand. So they're going to grab that bow right there like that. You see a lot of longbow shooters, they shoot with, like, with their hands like this in that position off to the side, like you see recurve and compound shooters, and they're shooting out of this section right here, just that little piece of their hand right there as that grabs onto that grip right there, and then they wrap a finger around, and this is how they actually come back and shoot that bow with just that all that energy right in here. You do that with a hill style bow, you're going to feel it. Because that bow's not designed to do that. Um, none of the bows are designed to do that, yet people still shoot them that way. I've never shot a long bow that way. I would shoot it with a good grip on there. But a lot of people tend to shoot with that recurve style grip. On a recurve bow with a very dished in grip, I can understand your hand is designed to lead into that way and shoot it like that. A long bow is not. A hill style or ASL bow especially is not. This bow is designed to be shot with a full grip where you're going to come in and you're going to grab that bow. I should actually grab that bow, but with the hill style one, you're going to grab hold of that bow and you're going to hold it and you're going to hold it like that. And it's got some advantages. When you grab that bow the right way and you have that bow and you have that thing set up, it transfers. You'll see that wrist, that heel comes in and that wrist is up for people that shoot like this with that hand up like that. Here you see that hand is dropped down. This verse, can you see that? Yeah, that verse, that, right there, that's the difference. But when I'm like this with this bow, all of that energy is transferred right up through that whole skeletal structure of those bones. Everything is lined up, you got the heel on there, and you get everything in that perfect alignment, and you have good control on that bow. If you take this bow and you try to shoot it like this, 
you're getting all that transfer right through this webbing of your hand. You have nothing, no bone structure there lined up. My bones are here, not here. They're, they need to be down there, not up there like that. So what happens is you get all that transfer energy in there and you will feel it. It's like that with any kind of bow, um, but with these, you don't want to shoot them that way. You want to have more heel in that bow. You want to follow that line right up through here, right from the base of that pad, right up through here. You want to lock that right in on that bow and have that in there just like that. And you hold on to it. You grip this bow, you get it, you get it set, you hold on to that bow, you draw it back and you're holding it. And what it does is it transfers that energy up there. So um, no, there is no hand shock with one. If you shoot it the right way, there's no hand shock. And believe me, you can shoot this bow so many different ways, and I tried that with this bow. They're finicky. The more my, the more reflex deflex they get, it's great, but that's why it's got a locator. It needs me to be into that locator spot. Even though I still shoot with a, with a solid hand down and a little more heel in it, I still have to find that locator, and I need to be into that locator grip in order for that bow to work really well. This bow, I can grab this bow right here like this if I want to. I can grab it here, I can grab it here, and I can even grab it here. And it makes zero difference. So it does not matter where I grab on that grip. It's still gonna perform the same for me. It's pretty interesting, but I grab right in there to the point where I have that arrow just basically um, running. Uh, here is an arrow right here, but I have that arrow. So that when I draw that, you can see the way my bones line up on there, the way my hand is bent, and that, that arrow rides right over my knuckle just like that, right on top of there, and that is an excellent thing. I mean, it's, I mean, I can feel that arrow just slightly above there, but I get right up on there like that. This bow allows you to do that really well. So it's a, it's a great setup. Um, the, as far, and another thing you want people to wonder about is the speed and the performance of them. Given the fact that you have one limb working in one specific direction all the way through, it produces a, a very uniform energy that gets transferred into that arrow. And they, they have cast to them. Arrow cast is different than arrow speed. Arrow speed is how fast the arrow leaves the bow. Okay, measured with a quantograph. How quick it's out of there, how fast it's going when it takes off. Cast is how much energy that arrow actually absorbs and how it can transfer that later on down the line. So you may have an arrow, you can have, let's say you have a bow that shoots, uh, let's just see a number and say 200 feet per second out of a quantograph, and the other one shoots 180 feet a second out of the quantograph, but there's bows out there where the one that shot 180 feet per second if you were to put a quantograph out there at 20 yards, would add actually that arrow would be going faster than the one that came out at 200. That's cast. Okay, that's the energy transferred into the arrow um, and how well it carries that energy through. A straight limb longbow has phenomenal cast. Um, it may not be as fast as some of these uh, hybrid bows and the R&D bows, R&D being reflex deflex bows right out of the gate. But with the right arrow, they have tremendous cast and they hold that energy for a very long time. So the whole which bow is faster thing is, in my opinion, completely mute. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, when it comes to these two bows, this one I've never quantographed a bow in my life. So I don't know how fast they are coming out of the gate for me. But this mild iron deflex or reflex deflex design, shooting the same arrow as this bow is, um, with a straight limb classic hill style bow, when I start shooting out there at 50 yard targets and I'm doing just a holding my arrow point, so when I'm looking, I got the point of that arrow, you know, on a target. And I'm actually setting that point right on there so that I have it set and I can hold it right on that spot and I shoot it. Out of this bow, which technically should be a little slower than that bow, they're coming out of the quantograph, but these arrows, when I shoot them from this bow, they hit higher. They're hitting higher than what my arrows out of that are. That means it has more cast. It can't transfer that energy and the energy stays with it and the arrow has that energy longer. So um, to me that's a major benefit for these hill style bows and one of the assets to them. So there is there is no downside to this bow. I, I uh, There is no disadvantages to them. These are phenomenal bows and like I said me being a reflex deflex kind of bow shooter for 25 years after finally trying one of these out, I, I wasn't sure if I'd like it or not because I'd never put, I've shot a couple of them, but never put much time into them. I'm telling you, hands down, it is the most accurate, best style longbow. I will not go back to any other bow. When I went from a recurve to a longbow, 
I said I'd never go, I'd never shoot or own a recurve again, and I never did. That was 22, 23 years ago. I had a few recurves. I shot them really well. Um, my buddy John, uh, he, he bought me a, uh, a longbow from Jim Reynolds at the time uh, for helping him work on his house and stuff like that. He had one made for me. First time I shot it, fell in love with it. Never went back to a recurve ever again. That longbow was it. I was hooked. I shot longbows ever since. Then this, and, and my bows were always a mild R&D style bow. Once I got a hold of a bow like this and put a, put a couple hours of time into it, I, I now am hooked. I, I mean, I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of arrows through this bow. I will not go back to any other style longbow. It's a bow hunter only. I don't care about 3D ranges. I don't care about target archery. I don't care about any of that kind of crap. All I care about is putting the arrow through lungs of animals that I'm out there chasing in the woods. This bow is the ultimate hunting weapon, in my opinion, period, over anything else that's out there. But... If you're looking for an ASL style longbow, Howard Hill style longbow, these give you some of the variations. You may want to try some of these other things. I may very well try some of these other variations next. For my first one, I wanted to go with a straight limb classic bow. It's kind of got the happy medium of everything, and I'm very, very happy with it. And I have another one of these on order as well, too. Eventually, down the road, I may want to try that Raymer, which is that reverse handle string follow. Or I may want to try whatever his new design is. I, I don't know, but I know that for the all foreseeable future, I will be shooting a Howard Hill style or American semi-longbow uh, because of all the benefits to it. Quiet, durable, or quiet, durable, uh, um... Uh, what was I going to say? Um, quiet, durable, forgiving, fast shooting, good arrow cast, easy on the hand, easy to control, um, just built rock solid, just incredible bows. They're just a super quiet. Uh, I love everything about them. It's just a phenomenal bow. If you're looking or interested in shooting a Howard Hill style bow or an ASL American Semi Longbow, check out northernmisslongbows.com. Steve builds awesome bows. Check them out. See what ones are on there. Call him up if you have any questions. He'll answer them for you. He's really good about that stuff. There are other makers out there. They've got other boyers that build uh, Hill style bows. They've been around for a while. Uh, they do a great job. But I think you'll be hard pressed to find somebody that builds one as good as uh, Steve does in Northern Mist. And, uh, and I don't just say that because he's my friend and I shoot his bows. That's pretty much a unanimous decision everywhere. Pretty much anybody who knows anything about hill bows says straight up and down and, and constantly says that, you know, Steve Bill's one of the best ones out there. So, um, and, and again, I, no affiliation to that. No, I don't get any kickbacks or anything from it. He's, he's my friend. I say it because he's not only my friend, he's my boy and he builds incredible bows. So, but this kind of gives you a rundown of what the ASL style bow, what an American semi long bow is. And uh, what's so great about it. And, and I love it. Like I said, this is all I'll shoot from here on out as far as I can see. So thanks for watching. I'll be back with more stuff soon. Pretty soon I'll do another one talking about the different styles of modern longbows that are out there and let you know some of that stuff too. But the ASLs have the most questions. That's what people are wondering about, especially since this year I've been shooting one. I've been shooting it a lot, putting it on my Instagram, uh, talking about it a lot, and people keep asking me a tremendous amount of questions about this bow and why I love it so much and what the benefits are, what the downsides are. That's why I made this video. Hopefully it benefits you. Hopefully you learned a lot about these kind of bows. And uh, if you want one, give Steve a call. He'll get you all set up. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.